Hi everyone, it is uh, our Q&A Monday and I'm Hannah. So basically I help you to have the lifestyle you desire and still pay the right amount of tax. So it's our Q&A Monday again and as uh, said, uh, normally it's a question from uh, one or the field of our clients and then I thought the guidance itself will be beneficial for everyone. So today's topic is about um, 100k plus earners so because this group is kind of special um, of course it's a great success it's awesome that you're earning six figures a year even if as an employee but there are some uh, pitfalls about tax so today um, of course I will talk a little bit about the tax implication when you hit 100k as well as some tax strategies that you can uh, consider if you are at that level. And of course, like overall tax is a it's sort of balance about giving more of your share to benefit more people in need, as well as, you know, benefit for yourself, because you work so hard and then you deserve a fair share for yourself as well. Okay, so what are the tax implications uh, when you hit 100K? Well, of course, we know the income tax rates, they have the different bands. When you are at that level, like 100K, you are still at 40%. But if you are hit 150K, then you pay tax at 45%. But when you hit 100K, uh, the other downside is you're actually losing the tax-free allowance for each year. Currently, um, majority of people will have 11,500 for the year tax-free. But when you hit 100K, you start losing that allowance. So effectively, someone did the math uh, for this. So every one pound extra you earn uh, after 100K, you pay tax at 60p so 60 percent tax we don't want to do that so it's definitely worth considering some uh, strategies that can help you to mitigate a little bit but still uh, make sure you pay the fair share of tax okay so and also the other uh pitfall i come across from like in reality it's people probably don't are not aware of it especially when people have two jobs or when they change the, the employer or they change address. So what can happen is when uh, the tax authority, when they detect you are hitting 100K for the year, even if you're an employee, they automatically register you on the self-assessment system. So that means you have to do the tax return once a year. Um, of course, most of the employees, when you think you work for uh, a company and uh, the company is taking care of your tax bill, so you don't even have to worry about, don't have to think about filing a tax return yourself. But suddenly, when you hit 100K, you have to do that. And also, apparently, there are people that are not aware of it until they receive a penalty. And sometimes the late filing penalty can be like really, really late. Okay, so in this case, of course, we do have uh, some, we do have some solid ground to appeal. Um, by just saying ignorance or not aware, it's actually not really enough. But the thing is, if you don't receive any correspondence, if you don't get a notice, then you don't have the. Uh, one thing is, they will issue some reference number for you to uh, file the tax return, but you cannot file the tax return without that uh, number on that notice. So if you don't get that, then uh, that's a solid ground for you uh, to appeal for the penalty. But it just so you're aware, when you think you are, uh, you are hitting 100K for the year, perhaps it's worth uh, having a look if the tax man has been uh, automatically registered you on the self-assessment system, or even have double check with the tax authority if that's applicable for you. Um, just look out for your mail, uh, don't ignore any letters from the authority. So that's when you actually hit that line. 
and then something worth considering, just uh, avoid any further hassle. Of course, uh, for the client I dealt with before, with a similar scenario, um, it's been successfully, the penalty has been cancelled successfully, um, but just the hassle, the stress, um, it's by just uh, taking care of it, just having more awareness, then um, you, can, you can avoid it. Okay, so that's some tax implication, the 60p tax trap, as well as the obligation of uh, filing self-assessment. Okay, what can you do uh, tax-wise uh, in order to mitigate this sort of tax impact? So of course it's awesome, uh, you, you earn a lot more, you work really hard and be really successful at your career. But you know, uh, you work hard, you want the certain amount of money that is in your pocket uh, rather than uh, paying more to the tax man. So uh, what can you do to make sure you have more of that in your pocket fairly uh, and then you know still you, you still pay the fair share of tax. Okay first thing uh, perhaps lots of people consider and also quite obvious is consider the pension contribution. Uh, perhaps your company especially if you're working for a big corporation then the company already taking care of the pension for you. But there's also no harm, you can still contribute uh, some pension uh, yourself into your pension pot. So of course in this sort of a scenario, if you are earning at like 40% on the 40% tax bracket, then every 60 pounds you uh, put into your pension pot, the tax man will top up 40 pounds. So to make it bigger as a form of, of tax relief. So eventually, uh, not just you contribute, the, the money you contribute to your pot is still yours, but then the tax man give, make it bigger. So make your overall wealth bigger. So that's something worth considering. And of course, there, there'll be uh, each year, there'll be certain allowance as well. And also it's uh, when you at that level, it's worth uh, talking to a financial advisor, really analyze your pension pot and then give you more advice on uh, where to invest your money, where to invest your pension. So it's worth considering uh, go, having the pro professional advice from a financial advisor uh, about your pension pot and retirement planning. Okay, second thing, uh, something can be considered probably uh, not, not a big impact, but still they will make some impact. That is the donation, charitable donation. Um, of course, there are two ways to do it. Uh, one thing, one way is you can do it, uh, just, just a donate to the charity that is close to you and make sure you do tick the gift aid um, box so that the charity can claim the tax relief as well. So for you effectively, uh, if you're earning like at 40%, then um, you know when you, for instance, you uh, donate a thousand pounds for the year to the charity, then effectively the tax amount of tax relief you get is two hundred pounds. So it's not a big amount, but something uh, worth considering. Uh, and also, it's worth it's cl if that's the charity close to your heart, then why why not? So and if, uh, at the same time, you get some tax relief. Okay, so that's something you can consider. Um, of course, if uh, your company do have like payroll giving, then that's taken away from your gross pay. Um, of course, if you just uh, just uh, hit a hundred k, and perhaps you can uh, donate something, and then you make sure you your taxable uh, income that is just under a hundred k, so you still don't lose any personal allowance and um, you probably get some tax relief uh, on that. Okay, so these are two, uh, two ways. Uh, it's quite normally quite straightforward. Okay, and the other way is, uh, I think majority of the big company, they do provide a uh, lot of perks. I think, uh, of course, most of the perks that you have, you still have to pay tax on it, but sometimes it's worth considering some sort of uh, tax-free perks. Like some company pro probably provide um, things like cycle to work or um, like on-site canteen, these are tax-free. So um, 
really maximize the perks as much as possible. Uh, these are these are the tax-free perks. Of course, if your employer reimburse you uh, things like a professional indemnity insurance or a professional subscription, then these are tax-free as well. Um, if they don't, then you can you can still claim the tax rebate on it. Like a uh, lot of uh, medical professionals, um, they do have to pay like indemnity um, and also like professional fee or even some some sort of a training fee if that is uh, necessary for a job. Then you can claim some tax rebates on the on on your tax free perks. Okay, so these are um, some simple ways. But also there are some a little bit advanced ways. Perhaps this one, um, I just give you idea for the pure tax uh, purpose. But in reality, uh, when you consider um, the next one I'm going to talk about, um, when, when you consider make, do, making this decision, then do I think do need to speak to a financial advisor on it. So the next one is some sort of special investment. It's, it's totally uh, legal. It's not some uh, some sort of offshore scheme. It is called venture capital trust. So that's that is actually the a sort of a trust that uh, fund the like startup company, like small companies, to help them to grow because the government really wants these. Uh, sort of very ambitious startups to grow and they can create more jobs and create more social security. So um, this kind of a venture capital trust, so basically how it works, the tax benefits for you is actually quite generous. So if you invest £10,000 for the year uh, into that VCT and effectively the government give you £3,000 back in cash so that is a, actually the a very generous uh, kind of tax relief. But at the same time, it can be quite risky as well uh, because these are small companies. You, you never know. Uh, there's an old saying like perhaps 95% of the startups fail within the first 10 years. So you never know. But the upside is, first of all, you get that uh, tax relief when you invest. And when the company actually succeeds, when they actually grow and start paying dividends, then you have the tax-free dividends as well. So these are the benefits. Um, of course, it, it sounds very uh, lucrative when it comes to the tax, uh, tax relief you get, but uh, the downside is it can be quite risky. And do seek for a financial advisor about this, about your investment. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, one thing I also would uh, like to share about um, what, what you can do to maximize the uh, legal tax relief um, when you are earning more than 100k, that is perhaps you can maximize the, some tax-free income. Um, I have one of the previous episodes about taxable and non-taxable income, and apparently there's some, some sort of income you can you can earn up to certain limits. You don't have to declare uh, in your tax return at all. So one thing that is, uh, if you're having, uh, if you're a homeowner, and if you rent out your spare room to a lodger, then up to seven thousand five hundred pounds uh, rental income from renting out a room, then that is tax free. So you can do it. Um, you know rent out a spare room and earn up to 7500 for the year and you get that actual cash but then it's it is tax free okay so that's one way and the other thing currently we do have every year we do have 5000 pounds tax free dividend so if you do have dividend income and up to 5000 that is tax free so despite what level of income you are in that is always up to 5,000 tax free. But from next year, this number will decrease to uh, 2,000. So be aware of it. And then of course, if you do have some other ad hoc income, like uh, just do some sort of uh, freelancing work to earn some spare cash or sell something, uh, earn some spare money, 
than less than a thousand pounds for the year, then that is tax free as well. So uh, do consider if if you can, uh, not not for maybe not for everyone, but if you can maximize this as well. Okay, so overall today we've talked about the tax implication. What are the downside when you hit a hundred k? What are the obligations? Um, as well as some tips like pension contribution, um, like charitable donation, or even venture capital trust. Uh, some some ideas for you to uh, maximize the tax relief. Then um, you can you can have a look into your situation. What will be uh, what resonates you the most, and then um, you can take action accordingly. Of course, uh, things like pension contribution or investments, I do advise you to look for financial advice properly um, because this can be like, especially VCT can be quite risky as well. So do look for professional advice on your wealth growth. Okay, so that is all for today. I hope you find today useful. And of course, if you do have any questions about your tax bill at all, please be free to let me know, uh, send me a personal message or connect with me. Um, also, I am I have a private Facebook group that is called Tax Deductible Lifestyle Tribe. So um, I normally I will share more in-depth resources, which I only share with my tribe. So um, later I'll put a link below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I will put a link below as well. So you can click and join. Not just you can connect with me, um, but also uh, we have our panel of experts. We do have a financial advisor in there. So don't worry about if you, if you want uh, like pension or investment advice. Um, but we also have business as experts if you're running a business. Then so these all these people we can help you to earn more money and grow your wealth. Okay, and again, I hope you find that this one useful. If you do uh, like this video, like it, or I would be really grateful if you can share it with your colleagues or your friends or family who might find it beneficial. Okay, so um, I hope you find this one useful, and I shall see you very soon. Bye now.